when you brush your teeth in prison, you spit in the toilet. You don't spit in the sink. You never spit in the sink. That's where you wash your face. That's where you wash your bowls. And you're living in a whole house with another human being that happens to be the size of a bathroom. So you have to be really fastidious about the way you clean and the things you're conscious of because people take it really personally. So the irony is though, that people will sometimes use the toilet to clean the cell. So they'll take laundry detergent or cleaner or whatever they have, they'll scrub the toilet really well and then use that water to wipe the walls down. So you have guys in prison who wipe the walls of their cell every single day. Well, they're not spitting on it or peeing on it or doing anything else because they're really careful about that, but it's just something to do. It makes them feel clean, it makes them feel structured, it allows them to pass time, it allows them to have a routine that's actually healthy or at least relatively healthy compared to a lot of the alternatives. So people will take that, they'll take a rag, they'll wipe all the walls of their cell with laundry detergent in the toilet water after the toilet's been cleaned again. And then they'll take it and they'll take a dry rag and they'll brush all the stuff up to the front of the cell and you the cardboard from the back of a notepad. You'll scrape all the dust or all the whatever's on there. You'll put that in your little trash can and then you'll wet your rag or wet your sponge if you're lucky enough to have one and you'll do the whole cell floor like that. Same way you put wax down. You're not allowed to have wax in the cell, at least in Virginia, but you put the wax down with a rag, you go little by little by little and you have guys who have like inches of wax on their cell because they put hundreds or thousands of coats down and back before they started getting really like on the rules, you had guys who would make like checkerboard patterns or would put entire puzzles all across their floor. It was really neat to see what guys did to kind of upkeep the quality of their cells. I think the easiest one, but the kind of neat one is they would use paper bags, but use different angles and different heights. And you ended up with these like checkerboard patterns in the paper bags, but it almost looked like a wood floor. But you would do all this stuff because at least in level four, like you can't get a broom and a mop. It's not happening. Like you're allowed to get a broom and a mop, but you can never get one. So you have to clean the floor that way because you're tracking stuff in and out. And some people are like, okay, we always wear shoes in the cell. So cool, you wear shoes in the cell, you're not as worried about it. You wanna clean it up, but you're not like super down on every detail. But you have people that walk around in their bare feet or in their socks, and those people are really like, they're clear about it. Like you take your shoes off when you get to the door, you walk in in your socks or you walk in in your bare feet, and then you put your shoes on out the door and walk out. You don't ever track dirt in that cell. And even so, you better clean up at least once a day or twice a day. And I've seen more conflicts between cellies about hygiene like that. Like, did you pee on the toilet and not wipe it up? Did you do whatever? And in some places, it, people expect you to sit down to pee because they consider it unhygienic if you don't do that. But all this conflict about whether you drop something and you're trifling or, remember one guy almost stabbed his cell partner, literally like went and got a knife to stab his cell partner because he had clipped his toe or his toenails on the top bunk and some had fallen down onto the floor next to his bunk. And he said, if those hit my bunk, yeah, anyways. So that's the kind of unhealthy behavior and unhealthy like compulsion about cleanliness that they have because we're in this little place where we have no sense of control. And having no sense of control, well, people take control where they can. They try to have control over their little space. You have people who like, I had one buddy who would write down literally everything he ate. He tracked his calories and his carbs and his fat and his whatever for the entire time he was in there. I'm talking about years. He has like notebooks with years of what he ate and when and how many cups of this from the chow hall and it's insane. It's not about a healthy interest, it's about the fact that he's compulsive and he needs some way to feel a sense of control in his life. People are like that with exercise. People are like that with cleaning their cell or with whatever project they're working on because they feel powerless. Like, I have never felt more powerless than when I was in prison. Well, I don't know, sometimes I feel more powerless now that I'm out, but <clears throat> it's this feeling of you have nowhere and no control and no, you know, no kind of influence on the world so you find your one little thing. I exercise maniacally, I, you know, did other things maniacally. And I did find that like cleaning the cell daily really helped my time and helped create a structure. And once I moved to a single cell, it was this interesting balance because now it was no longer like cleaning the cell because it was expected of my cell partner or setting that routine so that my cell partner would understand I expected. Now it was just on me and it was like, I can be reasonable at this. I don't have to like scrub the floor every day. I can clean, you know, every other day and that's okay. Then getting out and adjusting, like I remember the first night I got out, I went to my mom's house and I went in the bathroom. I was like, oh my God, this is unacceptable. Like we've got to scrub this and we've got to scrub that. And a month later, I am not thinking about that. Like, I still wanted to wear shower shoes for a month, but I wasn't thinking about it because I realized it's not so important anymore. All of a sudden, I started having opportunities and control and things that I could do in my life, and it wasn't so much about controlling the small things. So I think it's really unfortunate that we worry so much about whether you spit in the sink or the toilet. Because this institutionalization, this like learned programming about how to be a better prisoner rather than be a better person is a problem. And it's a problem on the part of the prisoners as much as it is the staff. So when I talk about policy and we need to change things, we absolutely need to change things within prisoner culture as well, because if we don't, things are not gonna get better. So this isn't, oh, the staff needs to do this, or oh, the policy needs to be changed here, or oh, prisoners need to do this. It is a system. Everybody in the system needs to get better, because if we don't, we're gonna continue to have this astronomical recidivism, we're gonna continue to have violence in prison, and we're gonna continue to have really unhealthy, unhealthy and unhappy staff. 
I mean, I, I got a contact or a, a message the other day from a guy, well, I don't wanna say what state he's in, but so in his prison, they are short 53% of their staff. So every day you go in, you have less than half of the people you're supposed to have. How is it safe for the prisoners or for the guards? Like, how is it safe for anybody? Well, it's not, but again, you don't pay guards a living wage. You don't give them the training and the respect. You don't give them the opportunity to do meaningful work. Like, they're just sitting there babysitting people rather than actually providing programming and helping and training. They're like pushing buttons all day or they're telling people to go to their cells rather than meaningfully engaging with them. So they don't feel meaning. The prisoners feel powerless, especially, we still have COVID regulations. Like the whole world has moved on from this. And in prison, you got guys who are still not getting wrecked. You got guys who are still not getting showers, still not getting access to the most basic things because of COVID regulations. So they feel powerless and they feel frustrated and they feel angry. So basically we've got a system that doesn't work that only works in the sense that it keeps people incapacitated, at least temporarily, but sometimes and often makes them worse so that when they are released, because 95% of prisoners will be released, they're actually worse off than when they came in. So we've got a system that's failing by every metric in the world, and yet people are like, yay, let's just keep doing this because we've been doing it for a long time. So don't spit in the sink and don't support a prison system that makes people worse.